awesome. Okay guys, well thank you so much for joining us again here. Another example of a night out under the stars and tonight capturing what at first looks like a simple and very ordinary scene. But my job tonight is to make the ordinary look amazing. Okay, so I'd like to try and set the scene for what I've got here uh, planned for this spot here tonight. Now, we're under this tree in the background here and there's junk everywhere all over the ground. This is at a farmhouse, but you know, some junk looks great and I love some of the stuff that's laying here. So the plan is to take a background shot facing towards the east over there with the starry night sky in the background and then do some light painting on the ground here and light up all of this stuff here and hopefully make some amazing light painting art. So I'll show you around. So when I was scrounging around the property here I saw some of this old metal stuff and Oh, I don't really know what all of it is, to be absolutely honest with you. There's uh, bits and pieces of old rakes and farm machinery. And of course, there's this gorgeous tree, which has got borer holes all the way through it. But you know, my philosophy is that anything can be made to look awesome under the night sky. So that's our challenge tonight. And let's see how we're going to go about it. Okay, so once again, I've got my camera set up here pretty low down to the ground because I need to get under that branch of the tree so I can see the sky. It's really good at the moment because the Milky Way core is right on the horizon. So the constellation of Scorpio is just rising up above the horizon. So it's still underneath the branch of the tree. So that's what I'm aiming to capture. I'm using my uh, Nikon Z6 and the 20 millimeter f1.8 lens. Now for the background shot, I'm just going to shoot one single shot here and it's going to be shot at f2.2 for a 15 second exposure at ISO 6400. And then I'm going to stop down my aperture and I might even go down to about, I'll have a look. Normally I go to f5, I might go to f8 because some of these foregrounds very close to the camera. Um, I'm still going to leave it at um, 15 second shutter speed but the ISO, I'm going to bring it right down to about 500. And that's what we're going to do. So let's get into it. Okie doke. So I've just taken that background shot and it's come up really, really well. Love the look of that. So what I'm hoping uh, for now is to start taking the foreground exposures and they're going to be a little bit more complex simply because of it's really difficult to get around here so I'll do my best I'll see how we go okay so as I said before I'm going to change the aperture and I am going to go to f8 because I want to see how that goes and I'm also going to change the ISO down to 500 so that I can shoot these foreground subject matter now, of course, one of the most critical parts of this whole operation is the fact that I have to refocus the camera onto the foreground subjects here. If there is a, a very close subject, like a rock or something, that's really, really close to the camera, then it's very possible I would have to do what's known as focus stacking, which means I might do more than one shot at a different uh, focus point. Um, I'll see how I go here, but that's why I've stopped down to F8 because that makes it a little bit easier. So that's my next job, and then I'm gonna start light painting. Okay, so here we go. When it comes to focusing on the foreground, we do exactly the same thing we do for focusing on the night sky. We zoom in using the buttons on the back of the camera, and we go in and we check the focus. And there you go. You can see now I've got focus peaking enabled here. Uh, and that helps because it's putting a red surround around the, um, the focus when it's actually in focus. I hope you can see that. So it puts a, a, a red, a red um, line around it. That's called focus peaking. And so when I zoom back out again, I can see now that everything looks to be in focus. So I'm ready to do my light painting. All right, so once again, talking about light painting, 
I'm going to be painting from angles. So I'm going to be putting light into the subject from angles like this. And what I generally do is find one area at a time. And sometimes that can be a bit closer up. In this case, because I'm shooting at f8, I want to get a little bit closer to the subject. So for example, this wheel, I'm going to shoot it, uh, light it like this. I've got to put a fair bit of light into it because at f8, there's not as much light coming into the camera. And that should be about enough. And I'll move over this side and I'm going to be light painting this tank here from the angle. Notice how I'm almost on top of it. I'm mindful, however, not to get myself in between the camera and the subject I'm lighting. If I did that, it's a waste of a shot. And yeah, sure, I'm going to have to blend out the uh, torch light, which you can see here because I'm shining it around the place, but that's just the way it works. Now, I'm going to be lighting up this tree here because I think that's really important. I have to light the tree just from underneath and that'll give it a nice smooth look. A little bit less light on the branches because they're a much lighter color. So they're going to reflect a lot of light. Okay. But in relation to the angle of where I am in relation to the camera, I'm almost backlighting everything here. And that's my intention. I want to backlight things because it gives a much better light. Okay. And we can see if I move in close over here, I can even light things at the front here really close. Yes. And it takes a bit of getting your head around the fact that I'm in the shot myself, but that's how you do it. And if I move over to here, I can even light down this log here. And on top of all these bits and pieces in here, I'm close, yes, but it doesn't matter, works well. Okay. So the number of foreground shots is totally dependent on what you feel is necessary to capture everything in the scene. I've said it many times before, but light painting is an art form. It's not science and therefore can't be easily explained as a scientific principle. So once again, we've captured something really unique and individual. But of course, there are scenes like this scattered all around the countryside. All we need to do is slow down and have a good look around. Okay, as I promised, I wanna show you the complete process from start to finish. So let's get these images back home and into the computer to see what we can create. Well, once again, after a good night's sleep, I'm going to work on these shots taken out at the farm here in the studio. So, let's get into it. All right, well, here you can see we've opened up into Lightroom as per usual. Now, I've highlighted the background single image here, shot at um, f2.2, 15 second shutter speed at ISO 6400. You can see the adjustments I've done to that image here of plus 30 on the exposure, plus 10 on the contrast, minus 30 on the highlights, and plus 26 on the whites. That's all in the, ba in the uh, basic tab. Down to the lens corrections here, I've um, added the profile corrections and the removed chromatic aberration, which is normal. And then the noise reduction, plus 45 luminance, plus 45 contrast. And the Z6 has some of that noise reduction built into the camera setting. So I've just matched that up here. All right, so that's all I've done to this background image. Now, looking at the foreground images, you can see there's quite a number of them down here. And so looking at just a few of them now, you can see what they look like. Um, and I'm just gonna go through them quickly and select the ones that I want to use, which is all of them except one. I think I've just had a quick look at them. So I'm holding down the shift key and clicking on the first and the last and it, and it selects them all. This one here I don't want to use because it, it's not marked, so I'm just going to hold the control key and click on it and deselect it. Now, the background layer that I want to use, the sky layer, I'll just hold down control again and just click on that. And you can see how that one's now selected along with these other layers. I think I've got 13 in total. So I'm going to right click on any one of those, go up here and click edit in, 
We've done this before. Go down the bottom to say open as layers in Photoshop. And when we do that, it opens in Photoshop. I've saved you a bit of time because I've already got those open. So here we go. Now, when you see the Photoshop uh, interface, you'll notice that all the layers are one on top of each other. Immediately, that gives us a clue as to how Photoshop works. So you're looking at whatever the layer is on top and all the layers underneath are concealed unless you reveal or uh, take the layer away. So for example, if I click this little eyeball on the top layer, you can see the layer that's underneath and all the way down the line, etc. So the first thing I'm going to do is move that background layer to the bottom just by clicking and dragging it right down to the bottom. Then it's revealing this top layer here, which is like painting of the tree. You can see it up here. Now, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to keep this fairly brief, so you'll have to keep up with me, is I'm going to highlight all of these layers. Once again, I click on the top layer, hold down shift on the keyboard, and click on the second last layer. Now you can see all of those layers, there's 12 of them there are selected. I'm going to go up to the blend mode, which is right here, change it from normal to lighten. And immediately you can see roughly what my final image is going to look like. Now, it's a bit of a dog's breakfast because you can see all these bits of the light painting, the torch. Um, notice how I'm invisible, you can't see me at all. Um, but you can see all, all the light painted bits and pieces and it actually looks pretty good, just straight off the, off the bat. So remember how I lit those. Um, now, what I'm going to do now is go in and refine some of these areas in here and get rid of all of these. Also, you'll notice in the sky, there's a whole lot of stars that are recorded there, even though I was shooting at f8, it still has picked up some of the stars. I've got to get rid of those as well. So I'm going to show you how I do that. First things first, I'm going to de, uh, I'm going to hide all these layers. Now we're just working on the top layer. So I'm going to add a layer mask. Once again, I've done this before and you've seen me do it. So there's a layer mask here. I'm working on that layer mask now. Going over here to the brush tool and click on the brush tool. And up here, I'm going to select a um, medium uh, hardness brush, make it a little bit, oh, well, let me see, about, about that big will do for the time being, and opacity of 100. And what I'm going to do here is just rub out the sky. You see the stars in there? I don't want those stars because when, when you're working with that light and blend mode, if you have something that looks light, uh, for example, stars in this particular case, then you'll be able to see them. Now, I don't want to see stars. Stars are not part of my um, background requirements here because I've already got a background shot that is showing all of the stars. So that's a pretty rough mask, but I think I've got rid of all the stars that I could see there before. Now, this is one of the other advantages of shooting at uh, you know, F5, F8, or whatever it is, and lowering the ISO. It's not picking up so many stars anymore. Okay, so I've done that. Now if I enable that um, background layer again, here you can see beautifully that the tree has become lit. Isn't that good? So all I need to do now is work my way down. Now I've just enabled the second layer and you can see just that one layer is lit. Now I, I wanna copy that layer mask from the top layer to the second layer. So I'm gonna hold, um, hold the Alt key, click on that and just drag it down. And what that's done, you can see here that it's copied the same mask that I created for the first layer onto the second layer. And in doing so, it's got rid of any, well, it will get rid of any of the light painting, and etc. that I'm involved with here. Now, as we go down, I'm just gonna quickly go down. You can see that once I've enabled this layer, then you can see this little bit of my hand here, light painting there has been enabled. So I wanna get rid of that. So I'm just gonna copy that same layer again. This is a, a quick way of working because I don't have to keep doing the same light uh, layer painting now, but I just copy what's already done. Now just looking at this, um, yeah that looks pretty good. I'll go down to the next one and you can see there's a bit more here that I've got to get rid of. So if I copy that, Alt, drag, once again, see it's copied it and got rid of it all. So I'm just going to do this for all of these layers, Alt and drag. Now that one didn't disappear, why? because it's on top of the tree. And on that top layer, I didn't mask out the tree, but I will, I will on this one. See how I'm just rubbing it out? Remember, I've got the brush tool over here selected with a black, black foreground here. So anything I um, paint on here will be rubbed out. So for example, if 
if there's something on that layer that um, I go over accidentally, say for example down here, I accidentally rub out that bit. See how I've rubbed over there? Now if I go back to this and change it to white, I can just rub it back in again. So using layer masks is non-destructive and it's a really, really good way of working with these layered files. So let's go down, down to the next one. Now this one's pretty cool. So I'm going to hold Alt and drag that down and you can see once again it hasn't fully got rid of this bit up here. So I'm going to now make sure I'm on the right layer, I'm on this layer here and just rub it out. Notice it's not rubbing anything else out because the other bits are on the other layers. So that's, that's one of the things to get your head around with this layer masking. Here we go again, so I'm going to drag that down, Alt key, just drag it down once again. That's gone because it's already been rubbed out. We're going to go down again, same thing, I'm just copying these layer masks all the way down to the bottom. Now this one here, you can see there's a little bit that didn't get rubbed out, so I'm going to rub it out. Done. And we'll just go right down to the bottom with this method. See that once again that, that one got rubbed out because you could see that I already had that covered on the layer mask. Second bottom one, we'll just pull it down there. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And now the last one, I'm enabling that bottom layer. Drag down the layer mask to the bottom layer. So there you have a, a basic rundown of all of these images that um, are layered together. Now, the thing now is to get creative and work out how much of the subject here you want to keep and how much you don't want to keep. Now, for me, just looking at this foreground, it's a bit too busy and these drums, etc. So what I'm going, I like this over here, it's nice and subtle, I like the tree and I like this wire that's over here. In fact, on this wire, I think um, there could even be some wire that's been rubbed out. Let me just have a look. Uh, no, let's just find it. Because it is easy to rub things out that you don't mean to. No, that looks all right. So what I'm going to do now is just turn off a couple of these layers and work out which bits I don't want. Now, immediately, the second layer down, when I turn it off, you can see that the edges of these drums disappear. And I prefer it without that light in there. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to leave it off. I don't need that layer. Sometimes you do this. You notice things that um, even though you shot it, and when you shot it, you thought, I might need that. But later on, you don't need it at all. Now, that one there, I really like what that's doing to the top of the drum. So I'm going to leave that because I love that highlight that's there. But on the bottom of the, the ground down here, I think that's a bit hot. So uh, just find the layer it is, this one here. Go over to the layer mask. Make sure you've got a soft brush now. So I'm going to go up here to, to the softest brush, which is this one here on my computer. On your brush tools in your computer, they may look a bit different to this. You've got to actually enable them. And what I'm going to do is just see how I'm rubbing that out and making it a bit darker in this area, because I think it looks a bit more moody when I do that. Yeah. Yeah, much better. Much better. Perhaps even a bit there as well. All right, so that's this layer here. Now we'll go down to this one. Now, every, this is very artistic, remember? So you might like something and someone else might not like it, and that's, that's quite okay. It's all about the artist here. Now, this is not about... Um, it's definitely not about t um, technical technique or anything like that. It's all about art. So what we do, oops, I just painted too much out there, so I'll put it back in again. Um, and as I go down with these layers, I'm looking at bits that I think are too, too hot or too bright. Now over here, I'm looking right on the edge of here. I think that's a little bit too bright. I'm going to drop the opacity on that down a bit, make the brush a little bit bigger because it feathers better when it's a bigger brush. And it just drops so here. Yeah, it's dropping the edge of that log, and I like that. That's good. Let's go over to the next layer. I am rushing through this because I don't want this video to last forever. Now, there's a lot of light in this foreground here, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to drop the opacity a fair bit because then it doesn't rub it all out in one foul swoop. And see how I'm just clicking on it gently and it's creating a bit of a gentle little, yeah, darker, darker bits there. Let's go down to the next one. Not much there. Uh, yeah, okay, now that's 
that's a pretty strong light there, but I want to keep some of that, but I do want to get rid of a little bit of it. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. Make the brush smaller, uh, probably about that big, and I'm just going to rub out just the edge of that. So you've got to understand how light works. It falls off, and it's not always the same intensity in the same spots. So this is something that you just play around with. After a while, you get to, you get to sort of realise what, what looks realistic and what doesn't. And I sort of like the fact that that light is sort of on one side of the drum rather than on all sides of the drum. It just depends on, you know, what you think looks right. All right, let's move to the next one. Oh, that's on the tree. Uh, yeah, you, you can look at that tree and I think maybe that tree is a little bit too, too bright. So I'm just going to do the same thing, make my brush a fraction bigger, it's still a very soft edge brush, and I'm going to rub out bits of the tree. See how the bits of the tree are now, are now a bit, little bit darker, and what that's doing, there's a chain hanging over that tree, and I'm actually bringing that chain into focus because I've rubbed out bits of the tree, and that's a deliberate thing. It's an artistic choice that I've decided. Um, there's not much there, and yeah, not much there. So essentially, that's it. Um, I haven't done much at all to the to the image, the background. Now, if I wanted to, I can click on this background layer and add perhaps a um, curves adjustment layer. So I'll show you quickly show you what that might look like. It may or may not be necessary for this image, but I'll show you how to do it anyway, just to give it a bit more oomph. So what I've done here, I've, I've clicked on the bottom layer and added an adjustment layer and I've chosen curves and then it comes up with this little graph and I've just dropped down the curve there and raised the diffraction there. It's only a subtle change and when I click it off you'll see the difference. See how it's, it's added more contrast to the sky and even over here you can see all the sky background has changed a little bit but the foreground hasn't changed at all. So essentially there we have our multi layer there's 13 layers there and this is a this is a subject that, that is pretty junky when you're out there. I could hardly walk around without tripping over all of this rubbish that's in the foreground here, wire and all sorts of things. But it actually doesn't look too bad. So what I'm going to do now is uh, flatten the image because I don't want to keep all these layers. I'm going to go up to layer, flatten image. It's going to ask me if I want to discard the hidden layer because there's one here that I have got hidden. I'm going to say okay to that. Now remember, if I wanted to work on this again at a later time, I wouldn't be flattening these images. I'd keep all of them as individual layers. But the fact of the matter is that I want to flatten this image because I've got way too many files. It becomes a massive file size and you know all of the different things. So what I'm going to do now is cross out of Photoshop, ask me if I want to change it, I say yes. And what that will do is take me back to Lightroom and it will open up that image in a minute right there as a completed um, edited layered file. And if I wanted to do any more editing, I can. Sometimes I do this gradient thing, which I've showed you before, where I put a graduated um, filter here and drop the exposure of fraction, just to, just to bring a little bit more contrast in this corner here. Um, that doesn't need a whole lot, to be honest. And essentially, Hit, uh, press F for full screen. Essentially, there is our completed image. Now, if you look at that shot, now it looks a whole lot better than it did when I was actually there taking the shot. Uh, what I've tried to do is create light and shade. I've got contrast in all of these details. This old drum looks fantastic. And it's all because I've lit it from different angles. I haven't lit it from the camera angle at all. You'll notice that. And you can see all of these bits and pieces when you zoom in how sharp they are. It takes a while for, for the um, software to catch up with the uh, sharpness um, because I've zoomed in there. And yeah, it's just fantastic. All those bits and pieces, there it is, it's coming to focus now. So look at all the detail that is in this shot. Isn't it just amazing? You wouldn't think that you could capture so much clarity. And there it is. So there we have it. That's how we edit um, 13, well I actually dropped one out, so there was, in effect there was 12 layers, one background layer and 11 foreground layers, and we've made something very uh, junky and very untidy into something that I think has become a thing of beauty. 
So, as always, I'll be really interested in your thoughts regarding the final outcome of these images. Please leave a comment below and I'm always happy to answer any questions you might have. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'd be delighted to have you on board. Once again, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate that you do. Okay, I look forward to seeing you guys again soon.